Hello everybody and welcome to the G Kaiser Age. My name is Lucian G Kaiser and in today's episode we're going to be reviewing the Bandai Tamashi Nations Metal Build ARX8 Lavatane from Full Metal Panic Invisible Victory. Once again, I am absolutely enjoying the Metal Build series, and this figure is no exception, so let's get right into it. G Kaiser Age Launching! Okay, so this is the ARX 8 Lavatane. It is an arm slave used by the Mithril forces, exclusively used, of course, by our main hero, Sosuke Sagara, in Full Metal Panic, Invisible Victory. This is an awesome anime. It's available right now on Crunchyroll, so I definitely recommend watching it. But let's go ahead and take a quick look at the figure on its display base stand here. And I have to say, once again, Bandai really outdid themselves. This figure comes with a ton of accessories and so much detail on just everything and it's so well implemented. Now as you can see here on the display stand you can pretty much put every accessory that the figure comes with right on it and it even comes with a display bar so that it can hold up the figure. So let's go ahead and take a look at the ARX-8 Lavatane itself. Now, one of the things that I really love that Bandai did with this figure is a lot of the metallic inlay that they have on some of the detailed panel lining. So we're going to go ahead and just put it into a standing pose here. All right, so let's go ahead and take a closer look, uh, starting with the head here. So as you can see, it uh, has a lot of great detail in here on the head. So you can move to the side like that. It's got a lot more clearance than the ARX-7, which I appreciate. And you can, of course, do a full 360 rotation on it. It has a lot of fantastic detailing, including, of course, the head Vulcan cannons. As you can see here on a little bit of a close-up. They're a little bit dark, but so it's a little bit hard to see their detailing, but it's really well done. And I love all the markings and everything that they have. So Bandai really did a fantastic job with this mold. It just it feels like the animation of the actual mecha just jumped right off of the screen and I absolutely adore that about the quality that they put in. So let's go ahead and open up the cockpit as you can see the head slides down and then forward and the back part opens up as well. It's on a nice little hinge and you can see the Sosuke Sagara unpainted figure there in the cockpit. It even has a few panel screens in there. No detailing on them but still I appreciate the fact that they included it. And let's just go ahead and close that back up. So that's a great start here. Now we're going to go ahead and move on and take a closer look at the arms. So of course we got full 360 rotation on the arms. And then of course, of course the swivel right there at the upper arm. Full 360 on that as well. The shoulder has a very unique feature that allows it a lot of extra range by popping out that little part from the actual main body. And the shoulders have opening areas for of course the heat dissipation from when it's using the Lambda driver. I like that little bit of a detail. You don't actually have to swap out the shoulders for that. Though not as greatly detailed as the ARX-7. We got the double elbow bend. And then the hands are on a very special wrist. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the hand off here in just a second so you can see that. But it's basically the peg has its own little slide there right there. So you get a lot more range with the hands depending on what weapon or whatever you're trying to do with them. So you could really get some great posability out of that as well. And I appreciate that uh, extra bit of detail that Bandai went into for these figures. It really makes it helps to make it worth the price. And of course you got the forward reach there. So it can slide forward on that shoulder very nicely. 
And now let's go ahead and take a look at the crunch. So we've got a back bend that could bend back that far. And then we got the forward crunch, which is really nice. It's really well done. And I love you can see the die cast detail. They put a lot of die cast in this figure in all the right areas to really keep it firm and strong. And then you got the side tilt to side tilt. And then of course you got a swivel. Not a huge range, but more than enough to get any kind of pose that you would really need. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the hips. Now with the hips, all right, now the hips themselves, you can actually extend them down. There's this little spot so you can get more free range and you just simply pull the legs down gently while holding the main crotch area and that actually extends them down some so you get a greater range and then you can push on that same spot to push the legs back into place for the higher but with that you can get that nice high kick like you just saw you can get a nice side kick so with the stand that's included you can make it look like he's actually kicking another arm slave I love that that's pretty cool and then of course with these back plates out of the way you can move the leg back that far that's a very good range on that and that's going to help with some of the posability later on and then of course you've got the nice double bend at the knee Gonna move that arm out the way there the legs posability and the stiffness of the joints which are die cast once again is great you got a little bit of thigh rotation not a huge amount but really it's more than enough for this figure and then of course we got the foot and it's got a nice toe bend and everything so you got the swivel to the side a very nice range on it extremely awesome toe bend with a double toe bend really so you get that kind of extreme range got the side to side pivot which is excellent too I mean just the way they designed everything and the fact that all the joints in that area once again a nice solid die cast metal design so you're definitely gonna get your posability out of this without any issues even though the figure is a nice hefty build all right so now that we've taken a good look at the actual figure itself and the posability of it let's go ahead and start taking a look at some of the accessories and the weapons that it comes with all right so now once again that awesome display stand we're gonna go ahead and start taking a look at some of the weapons and accessories that the ARX 8 comes with and we're gonna start with of course the classic boxer shot cannon this is the same style of one that is used by the ARX 7 so there's nothing really too different on here but if you haven't seen that review I'm still gonna go over the details of this so as you can see it's got the pump action like it should as a shotgun or shot cannon as they call it it of course has a folding and extending stock and then all the details on it are really well done there's some nice metallic inlays on some of the more mechanical parts of the shotgun so I really love that and then of course we've got the ammo clips on here so once again the ammo clips it comes with two of them they have pegs on them so you can attach them in different ways to each other and they have pegs at the top and bottom so you can do an extended clip and I really love that they give you that option now, I'm telling you Bandai really thought of everything when it came to this figure a lot of stuff that you don't even see really in the show but is present here and just makes sense for the uh, figure itself as a military mecha unit so that is the boxer shot cannon Definitely a beautiful weapon. Now this is the clip for the shotgun. It attaches to the back of the figure. There's a panel that you pull off. And when you pull that panel off, it's going to give you the space that you need to put the clip on. And then you can use that clip to, of course, put the shotgun 
on the back of the ARX-8 for storage. This is the same system that is used by the ARX-7. So there we go. Got the clip on there. The weapon sits on there pretty nicely. Now mine's a little bit wobbly. I'm not sure if it's just uh, the design of the clip. But still, it stays on there pretty well because, I mean, you know, you're not exactly going to be waving the figure around all over the place. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next set of weapons. So the next weapon we're going to look at that also has a spot on the display stand are the Anti-Arm Slave High Impact Grenades. Pretty basic, nothing too extensive, but I love the fact that it's got a nice metallic top to the grenade. Now the next are the anti-tank daggers and the reason why they're called anti-tank daggers is they actually have an explosive charge in them so the armed slave can use them for melee combat or throw them at an enemy armored unit and once it penetrates the dagger will explode on a timed explosion and take out the enemy armored unit so I really love these it's really cool it comes with two of them of course. All right, and then let's go ahead and take a look at the new weapon because those came with the ARX-7 as well. As you can see, they stow on the display base on here. Now, the new weapon for the ARX-8 are these new combat knives. And you just pull off this piece. They have little parts forming. And then you extend out the knife form. And then you just put the cover piece of the armored sheath back on there. Attaches on pretty easy and stays on there nice and tight. But these are pretty cool looking. I love the design of it. And you get two of these, of course. Now the fun part is how these get stowed on the ARX-8. So let me go ahead and grab out the other one. So now you can compare the stowed version with the actual knife out so let's go ahead and put this one back into knife mode or back into storage mode i should say from knife mode put this right back on there all right and let us go ahead and stow these so these are actually stowed as their stored form on the actual knees right behind the knee armor plate there's a little tab in there and you just slide it right in and it tabs into place now these can be a little bit tricky because they can kind of get knocked out a little bit easier when you're posing it like say in a kneeling pose or anything like that but when it's in its standing form and for the most part they stay in there pretty well I'm glad that Bandai managed to fit their design into the ARX-8 figure here. So now we're going to take a look at the big guy. The big can. i got to move this to the side here because we need some extra room for this guy. This is the Demolition Howitzer. And it is an awesome weapon. When they actually show it in the show, it is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and pull this off the display. I just have to angle my camera down a little bit because yeah this thing is huge now I love it the display rack actually has it to where you can swing it out and it has opening bars that hold it in place and it's just a little bit tricky to get sometimes because of that but yep there it is right there in its folded storage form Let's go ahead and move the display base back. And as you can see, there is the clamp that was holding it. You just swing that right back into position. I love that display base. Literally the best display base out there for a figure that I've gotten. All right, so now let's go ahead and fold out the main cannon barrel here after taking a quick look at everything. There we go. And it just locks into place. It's got a nice solid locking hinge. And then you rotate the barrel to the side to complete its deployment. And this thing is huge. This is a 165 millimeter cannon. Now that comes with 
the ammo clips and everything that we're going to take a look at in just a second. But as you can see, you can take the main barrel off and you can use a short barrel form. Still just as impressive and powerful. And we're going to go ahead and put the main barrel back on. Right there. And this is the ammo clip. Now this is really cool. They actually put gold metallic shells at the top of the ammo clip. And I really love that little bit of extra detail. And of course the clips can be attached together with these little fold out attachments and pegs. And then we're going to go ahead and toss this right back on here. Lock that. It locks into place nice and solid. So now, uh, because this cannon is kind of unwieldy, and I don't want to waste too much time, like actually, you know, getting it figure into a pose with it. I'm just going to show off a few quick pictures real quick, some stills that I've taken, showing it with the cannon deployed and the cannon, of course, stored on it. But it has this uh, arm right here for the hand grip. And then, of course, you have this clip right here that attaches to the shoulder of the ARX-8 depending on uh, the different modes that it's going to be in. And I'll show those modes off in a little bit. But all in all, this cannon is great. Now, one of the best design features that they did was this hand grip. The hand grip can actually rotate left or right. So it gives you more options when you're trying to pose the figure to where you don't have to have the hand straight on there. And that's really great because a lot of these big weapons like this on other figures, they didn't kind of have that hand grip. So you were kind of stuck with having to, of course, try and maneuver the figure's arm in the right spot. Okay, so now that we got the weapons out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the next very interesting system, the Fairy Feather System. This was de developed by Konami Chittery in the anime itself, and this system is basically designed to stop the function of any Lambda Driver units that are within the range of its effect. And I really love how they detailed and duplicated everything about this in the actual figure itself so if you take a look at it they have a lot of nice silver and gold inlay on this piece and a lot of great mechanical detail the fairy feathers can adjust and move around complete 360 and extend out the parts from when it's actually active now the some of them are a little bit hard to open as you can see so you have to kind of get your fingers a little bit in there but once they're open, they stay open nice and tight. And there's that nice gold inlay on the actual radiator parts. Yeah, let's try and get the zoom in a little bit more there. There we go. And you can see all the great detail that they put into it. And I just love that. There's so much detail on every little piece of this figure. Nothing disappoints in the detail department. So let's go ahead and do this other one. Let's get my fingers in there. There we go. Yeah, these metal builds really earn every penny that we spend for them. I'm going to tell you that right now. So let's go ahead and swap out the parts. So you just, of course, pop off the shoulders here, like with the ARX-7, when you swap out the parts for the Lambda driver shoulders. They pop off nice and neat. And they stay on there nice and tight, too. So let us go ahead... And once again, there's those shoulders. Now this is cool. So whenever you have the different shoulders on, the, the display stand actually has a spot for the shoulders to be held on it. So you don't have a bunch of parts just laying around or sitting in bags. And I really appreciate that. The only time you'll ever have them sitting around in bags is, of course, when you've got the figure on the display stand without the frame. So let's go ahead and snap these right into place. Whoop. Yeah, they snap in right there. 
And right there. Now I've, I've snapped these on and off a few times while just playing with the toy. And I haven't noticed them getting loose or anything for the shoulder. So I appreciate that too. Bandai really went out of their way to make sure everything stays nice and tight on the figure. But there you go. We got it with the Fairy Feather system installed. And it just looks fantastic. I just love the look of it. Now we're going to do the next part. And that is the heat dissipation filaments. Or, as I like to call it, the heat dissipation ponytail. And even on the display stand, there's a spot for that to be held too. <laughs> Bandai really went all out to make sure that you didn't have to put your parts in the baggies if you didn't want to. So let's go ahead and install that. So as you can see, I just popped open the back of the head piece. And then we're just going to put this in. And you can, of course, put it into like different positions and everything. But with some extra lighting and everything, it just looks fantastic. And I really love that detail about it. So I'm going to take a quick look at that real fast with the figure with everything. So as you can see, it's a fantastic looking figure. I absolutely love everything about the look of this figure and the actual mecha itself. Uh, when I first saw the Labatane pictures and read about it years ago when I wanted to you know, know more about how Full Metal Panic continues on beyond the original anime, it was just great to see the pictures of this figure and I always imagine having a figure of this mecha eventually and Bandai's metal build version is prob pretty much the best version that you're gonna get. There is a 160 scale model kit coming out of this um, from their Bandai release line that's gonna be coming out later this year but honestly now that I have the metal build I, I feel I have no need to get that model. I mean it'll look great on my shelf with my other 160 Bandai arm slaves but this figure just does everything and then some and it's just great you know display stand detailing posability the accessories and weapons that it comes with speaking of which let's go ahead and take a look at the next one and that is going to be the manipulator arms now these are very cool they can actually hold other weapons so you just pull that down and pull that piece off And once again, on the display stand are the actual open manipulators. So these are nice little grabby claws. And you just attach it right on there. Now the cool thing is, this claw and this manipulator can actually hold all of the weapons. You want to hold, have it holding a grenade while the other hands are being used with something for something else. You can do that. You want to have it hold the shotgun. It's a little tricky to get it in there, but it was designed to be able to hold it. So let's go ahead and put it in. It's just going to take a second here. Just slide that in. But once you get it in there, it holds it perfectly. And I absolutely love this. This is just too cool. Now, the cool thing is in the show, too, it showed the manipulators actually using the Lambda driver, too. So he could be engaged in combat with other arm slaves and still use the manipulators as like a lambda driver device to deliver a lambda driver style blow. And you see it comes with two of these. So let's go ahead and add the other one on. And we'll give the other one, uh, let's just say, let's give it a combat knife. So let's go ahead and open it up. Now they're really stiff and pretty tight, so I really like that though. It's really nice that the Bandai made sure everything is tight and holds well on this figure itself. So let's go ahead and grab the knife and get that in there. It's a little bit more trickier than the gun because it's, like, it's a really tight fit with these claws. So get that in there. All right. 
and we got the claw in there holding the knife and that just looks cool so he could be holding the demolition howitzer or something with his other hands and still have these manipulator hands holding a knife and the shotgun ready to go so I'm going to show off some more pictures of just the manipulator hands holding the weapons and also some pictures of the demolition cannon deployed so that way you can get a better view of it but all in all I just really love all of the extreme detail and accuracy that this metal bill brand has been pulling off with these arm slaves I've got the ARX 7 and the ARX 8 and I'm definitely looking forward to all my future pre-orders and other, of course, metal bills that I plan on ordering on the, in the future as well. So, all in all, this figure is very impressive and very well done. You will not be disappointed with all the detail, the accuracy of everything, and just the fun and posability of it as well. All right, another thing that I wanted to show off on the figure that I meant to show off earlier when it comes to the legs are the ex the actual heat dissipation points on those. So if you push up on the inner thigh, it pushes these to out so that way it shows these nice gold metallic vents on the legs that goes along with, of course, either Lambda driver use or the fairy feather system use. And it's just fantastic looking. Now we have one more other item to look at too. And that is the wire gun. This basically fires a wire with a hook, a grappling hook on the end of it. Now this figure comes with, of course, you know, a metallic wire with a rubber overlay on it and an attachment point. And on the underside of the forearm are the ports where this can be plugged in. You just have to pull it out. It's a pretty tight pull. So you just have to tug on it a bit there, and there you go. And then you just slide that right into the port. And of course, since it's a bendy wire, it'll hold its position really well, and you can bend it into different angles. As you can see there. Now, you really don't get to see this used too often in the show, except for a few times um, with some of the other arm slaves. But the fact that they added it in to make sure it was present, I really appreciate that. They did the same thing with the ARX-7, and I'm glad that they did it here with the ARX-8 as well. Alright, so all in all, I give this figure a 10 out of 10. This is a fantastic figure that Bandai has brought us from their Metal Build series. If you want to pick up a copy of this figure yourself, you can find it for ordering on the Big Bad Toy Store. I definitely recommend them. They have great shipping prices, great pre-order options, and they do accept PayPal, a nice secure way of making your payments to them. So once again, this is Lucian G. Kaiser from the G. Kaiser Age. If you love Full Metal Panic or you just love an awesome looking mecha figure in action, I definitely highly recommend you pick up some of these Bandai Tamashii Nation metal build figures, especially this one, the ARX-8 Lava Tain. It is a fantastic and great build. Uh, I got mine for $224.99 on, of course, the Big Bad Toy Store. And together with the ARX-7, both of them look fantastic standing next to each other, as you can see here. So once again, I want to thank you for joining me here in the G. Kaiser Age Fig Mechanics Review. If you like what you see here, please do leave a like leave a comment on what you thought was impressive about the figure and definitely let me know what you think about full metal panic also subscribe share these videos with your friends and anybody that you know that loves anime gaming and entertainment media once again this is lucian g kaiser signing out until the next invisible victory